I somehow managed to miss uploading the actual update video for last week. I uploaded some stuff, but and I, I thought I was back on track, but clearly I, I wasn't because I have a video sitting in a folder and I never uploaded it. So this video is going to contain an update for Sunday, July 16th through Saturday, July 22nd, as well as an update for Sunday, July 23rd through Saturday, July 29th. This is an update for the week of July, Sunday the 16th through Saturday the 22nd. Uh, my schedule for class is all put together. Uh, looks like everything is going to be starting probably mid-morning and running until 2.50. And then I will be off at some point in time to one of my two jobs. It's not a terrible schedule. I mean, it involves uh, chapel from 10.30 to 10.50, and then there's a, a like a break, a little break in there, and then lunch, and then I have a psychology class. I have Greek, classical Greek, Monday through Friday, and I have biblical Hebrew for four days of the week. So, I mean, it's... The languages are going to be tough. I'm not really crazy about psychology, but whatever. I'm definitely interested in the languages, but provided I can find enough study time, I think I should be able to get through this. I've got <clears throat> two of my books, and actually the book prices turned out to not be horribly bad this this semester, although the, the only really bad one is the psychology one. I have two Greek books. Uh, I got one used and one new. Both were around $20.00 little more than that maybe I think I got $45 of books right now I need an NIV Bible which I already have I need this psychology book which I'm going to rent a digital version of it and I think the digital rental version is $80 that's the expensive one and then the book for Hebrew just says it'll be handed out in class so I'm assuming it's just going to be a printout of some sort that the uh, instructor is going to give but all in all, I, compared to what I remember from college, these books are pretty cheap. And when I was getting my Bachelor's of Science, every book was like $1,000. So only having one absurdly expensive book, and it's only you know, 80 bucks, which isn't really horribly expensive. If I got a copy of like it in paperback, used is like $170, and new is like $300. So no, we're going digital on that one. Uh, tuition... As far as I can tell, and I may be reading things wrong, everything is covered thus far for this semester and next semester. I don't owe any money. Uh, I'm fairly certain that I'm reading my statement correctly, but if, I, if I'm not, then I guess uh, somebody will tell me at some point in time. <laughs> but I mean, coming into this, owing absolutely zero, zero for both these semesters is fantastic. I'm going to owe something for summer because there's a summer class, but I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. <clears throat> uh, two jobs. I have two of them. I have a, <clears throat> a custodial supervisor position overseeing some student employees at the uh, Martin Luther College uh, Early Childhood Development Center. That is Monday through Thursday, 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., this past week was my first week. I worked with the woman who's been there over the summer. Very nice woman, but really young, like maybe 20. Uh, just, you know, doing what you expect a 20-year-old to do, but I'm, I'm not trying to knock her or anything. She was an extremely nice person. I have absolutely no issues with her, but she decided that this past Thursday would be her last day. She didn't want to stay here last week, which I don't find with. She cleared that with me. She cleared that with our boss. So this coming week, it'll just be me in there, and I'm going to try to put together some kind of a plan for <clears throat> you know, going in during my shift and doing all the mating cleaning that needs to be done and then targeting sections for a little bit of a deeper clean because there's some stuff that's dirty in there, and it really needs to be handled. And then Fridays, I will be going over to Kraft Heinz at 3.30 to do what is called uh, process sanitation, which is after the production week of making Velvia and Kraft single slices. Uh, the equipment needs to be cleaned. 
And so basically we just, me and the, the, the team, we just go in there and deep cheese everything. And it's, it's interesting. It's, there's some heavy stuff moving around. It's very wet. Like you're dripping wet when you get done because everybody has a high pressure hot water hose and they're just spraying everything. And periodically you're just working on a machine and you get, you know, hit by a, stream of water and someone who's just spraying somewhere and there's like two tiers to this room <clears throat> so if you're working underneath and someone starts spraying up top you just start getting water raining down on you it's it's like constant monsoon season in there but it's it's all right of a job I'll, i think i'll get used to it it's not complicated by any means it's just really cheesy and wet uh but but but, but not a bad job by any means the only issue that I have is when I walked out of there on Friday, my first day, I got in my truck and started driving home and got hit, immediately hit with a migraine. <sighs> so I'm, I'm kind of having some minor medical concerns with this job because I have migraines that are triver, triggered by changes in the atmospheric pressure. And the very warm, wet atmosphere of the room we're in cleaning these machines is extremely different than the far less dry, far less wet, much drier, cooler atmosphere that I'm walking out to at 9 o'clock at night. I also had a lot of blotchiness on both my legs, and I think that may have just been from the wet pants. I'm not 100% certain about that. And the roof of my mouth was just in ton, tons of pain. It was just killing me all through Saturday. So, I don't know, I really can't afford to not work this job, so I'm hoping that it was just a one-off thing, but, I mean, if I'm going to have medical issues working this job, then I can't very well do it, and I'm just going to have to, once again, rely on the Lord to point me in the uh, correct direction I need to go in, so that's where we're at with these jobs. It's, the Kraft Heinz job is, I mean, it's not bad, I'm not super excited about doing it, but I'm, I'm not going to complain about it. The other MLC custodial position I do enjoy. It's nice. It's quiet. I can just throw on headphones and spend four hours cleaning up the place, no one bothering me. And even when I get the students in there, I have some of them work one hour, some of them work two hours, so I'm probably going to have plenty of time still at night to just be by myself and relaxing there. We are working on trying to get on some state and federal government aid programs. My wife has gotten a WIC card this week, which is Women, Infant, Children, <clears throat> which is helpful. It allows her to get food and things to help sustain herself so that she can sustain the one-year-old. Uh, we're hoping to get on a few other programs. We're trying to get on one that actually would send us some cash, which would be fantastic. And according to what we've dug up about it, both parents have to be working to be on it, but because I'm a student and she's a stay-at-home mother who breastfeeds, the woman she was talking to said there might be some exclusions in there that will allow us to get on this program anyways, which honestly would be fantastic if I could figure out how to get on this program and come up with enough money to compensate for what I make for the craft job. I would probably just see if I can not work the craft job and stay on the program and just do the MLC job. Because right now the craft job on Fridays requires me to come back in Saturday mornings to finish up the MLC job because it's supposed to be Monday through Friday, but because of this other job, I have to, I can't work it on Friday, so I have to come back in on Saturdays. Uh, oh, what is the other program? There's another food program that we're trying to, to get on that'll, that's, that'll just basically it'll give us a, like a, a, a card that we can go use to buy food. Uh, there are several food pantries in town. My wife has went to one of them. She's going to try to get to another one sometime this week and utilize those to sustain us. Um, our licenses haven't shown up yet. It's been a week. They said it might take up to four weeks. I'm hoping it doesn't take four weeks. I'd like to just have my driver's license. I don't like carrying around a, a void in Michigan license with a piece of paper that says, I'm all good. But we're still waiting on them, and we'll see what happens there. The nice thing is that even though we don't have licenses, my wife was able to prove residency enough to get library cards. So her and the kids can go to the library and check out books. Because I think the five-year-old is starting to get tired of the same old books that we have, which is 
granted a huge collection of children's books. We have like ridiculous amounts of children's books, but he's he's heard all of them multiple times, so it's it's nice that he can go to the library and get new books. <clears throat> new Walm also has an incredible, incredible library. If you're coming here and you have children, use it. It is a resource. They have little programs going on, and it is just a very, very well laid out library. The entire children's section is totally sectioned off from the rest of the library so the kids can just go in there and be loud and be kids and nobody cares. They can just enjoy the library. It's super cool. My wife, see I was, uh, what day was it? Was it Wednesday? I don't remember. She attended a family Bible study at St. Paul's and that involved her kind of being able to go and do some study and Amaz, our five-year-old, being able to go off and do like a Sunday school thing, which he enjoyed. It didn't go over perfectly, but he did really good in it, and I think actually it was probably the one-year-old that caused the most difficulties, but that's that's fine. We, It's nice that you know, my wife can get out and get amongst, uh, among other people, and that, <coughs> excuse me, and that there's a, a nice... <coughs> place where the five-year-old seems to enjoy learning about the Bible. Mm. So yeah, that's going to be a good thing. They're going to continue to do that. I think she's going to try to get hooked up with some other, uh, like, mother's groups and things like that around town, which will also be fantastic. We want to get the five-year-old into Sunday school, which will be fantastic for him. She's trying to sign him up for vacation Bible school at the other Wells Church, which I think will be also quite fantastic for him, because he's really just really just needs to be around kids and have social interaction and it's just something that we can't give him. Uh, I found a uh, gas station down at the uh, southern end of town that has 96 cent 32 ounce fountain drinks which is fantastic because as much as I don't want to drink Mountain Dew anymore I still do have a periodic migraine and even though they're nowhere as near as bad in New Ulm as they were in Michigan, they were wretched in Michigan, but here they are manageable. And, you know, sometimes they're, they're, they, they are still very physically and draining, and I get really tired. So I don't know what it is about Mountain Dew. I know I'm not the only migraine sufferer that uses this stuff, but it does help. I think it's just the, the caffeine jazzing me up or something. I don't know. I know that caffeine helps a lot of other drugs work better because I just, I think it just opens up, I don't know, I don't know the scientific behind it, but I know if you get like Excedrin migraine or other migraine pills that they all come with, you know, actually have uh, caffeine in them, so there's just something about Mountain Dew, so it's nice to know that I can go get a decent size Mountain Dew for less than a buck, when the store that's on the same block that I am sells the little 22 ounces for like a dollar ninety. their prices have just gotten absurdly out of hand, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, sorry, I have my notes over on the other screen, so that's what I keep looking at. So we got schedule, books, tuition, job, WIC, licenses, library cards, family, Bible study, 96 cents, sodas. <clears throat> what else is going on? Uh, uh, the second rear view mirror on my e-bike broke off, which wouldn't concern me so much, but it's the... <laughs> It's the left side mirror, so it's the one that actually shows me the traffic that's behind me, and it's the one that I use to make sure I'm safe, so I think I'm going to have to buy another another mirror for the e-bike, though the e-bike has still been a wonderful purchase back last summer, even though I've had issues with it. It's, it's wonderful around town here. I, I don't have to drive. I don't have to waste money on gas. I can just hop on and go back and forth to school, back and forth to work, back and forth to the store, I can throw the five-year-old on it because I have a seat for him and we can go do stuff. It was absolutely, absolutely worth the, the money that I spent on it. Um, what else is going on? I'm, uh, I'm behind on some videos. I have some stuff I need to get uploaded. Uh, other than that, it's just life trying to adjust. Uh, you know, the five-year-old is, he's struggling, but it is what it is. He's lived his entire life literally downstairs from two of his grandparents and not, I don't know, five miles away from another grandma and 
45 minutes away from my grandfather who came on down at least twice a month, was always with him. So he's struggling to adjust to this new place. But he's getting better here and there. And, you know, it, it's just, it is, it is what it is. And I wish I could, you know, could spend more time with him during the school year. And that is a bit of a concern because I'm going to be gone most of the day and most of the night. And it's, it's hard, but just going to rely upon the grace of God to see us through and help us figure this out because it's got nothing, nothing major to do with us. There's not a lot we can do because we are certainly not capable of pulling this off ourselves. Um, Lee is doing fine. He ends up spending more time in the basement than I would like, but it's a finished basement and it's got some natural light in there and he's got a nice little bed and I bring him up. Lee, Lee's the dog in case you didn't watch one of the other videos. I'm sorry, he's an old Jack Russell Terrier. Uh, I bring him upstairs, get him outside as much as I can, let him hang around up in the dining room and the uh, kitchen area as much as we can, but he gets a little, uh, he's old and he gets a little worried about the young kids making noise and a lot of times just wants to come back downstairs. Uh, he sleeps upstairs with us. I have a cage up next to the bed, so I put him in there, so he's pretty good there. Um, other than that, it's just it's been a slow week, learning, working new jobs, being tired, uh, wife stressed out just because of everything. The five-year-old still has jealousy issues with the one-year-old, but that's pretty typical from, you know, individuals or individuals, uh, brothers and sisters or uh, siblings. That's the word I'm looking for. Siblings, sibling rivalry is pretty, pretty normal thing. Um, I, I, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. I'm not going to keep rambling on. I touched all the key points that happened this week. So, uh, God bless everyone who watches this. I, uh, I hope and I, I definitely pray that the Lord is with you and he sees you through whatever trials are in your life. Good night. Okay, this is an update for Sunday, July 23rd through Saturday, July 29th. As of right now, we are on the MFIP program or the Minnesota Family Investment Program. We don't technically qualify for it because my wife and I both don't work and we have to set up some appointments to talk to the Minnesota Employment Agency people. They're going to try to find work for my wife, which isn't going to happen unless it's something that she can do remotely from home while taking care of two children. Uh, so I don't know if we're going to be able to stay on the program or not, but as of right now, we are on it, and we should be getting, I think it's $100 a month to put towards rent, I think some money for utilities, and possibly just some cash, maybe like at 300 bucks or something. I'm not 100% certain. So that plus WIC should be enough food and hopefully enough money to help, you know, kind of, uh, smooth things over. Uh, the craft job. I am not going to be keeping that job. I'm hopefully I am just going to be quitting that job this this week at some point in time. Although my wife has to talk to the uh, the MFIP lady about it because I'm not allowed to just quit a job without reasons and medical reasons were good enough. And I have found that the two times that I've worked there, the boots that they give you to wear that you have to wear are absurdly uncomfortable. I can barely walk by the end of my shift and I can't hardly walk at all when I get home and I'm hurting the next day. It's interfering with my ability to work my main job, so that's one issue, which the lady with MFIP knew. Uh, both times I have went in there, I have ended up with a migraine, not anything seriously severe because they... I don't have severe ones in Minnesota, which is awesome, but they are there. Um, this last Friday, uh, there was an issue with some vaporized cleaning agents that I inhaled and it killed my nose and my lungs and I'm just, I'm not interested in jeopardizing my health to make cheese. And I was cleaning one of their hoppers and with the wet all over the place because it's, it's just drenched in it like a pool and it's room we're cleaning and the rubber boots one of my feet slipped on one of the it gets the part of the machine that everything sits on 
thankfully I had my other foot, foot secure so I didn't fall, but I, I could have gotten seriously injured falling out of that stupid hopper. And if I get injured and I can't work, then you know that this game over for me. I'm just gonna have to drop out of school and go back to Michigan and be very sad. So this this craft job is just not worth it to me. Now I'm not saying that you shouldn't do this job. It's a good job. Craft seems to be a pretty decent place. All the people I work with are really nice, but you just have to, you know, it's the, uh, it's production sanitation Friday nights. You're going to get dripping wet. You're going to deal with a lot of cheese. You're going to be crawling around on a lot of machines. Uh, apparently there's some minor vaporized chemical exposure from stuff being dumped on hot things. Uh, it's not a bad job, it's just not a job for me, and not probably not the kind of job that everybody wants to do. But I mean, it's a good job, it pays like I think I'm making like 24.09 an hour doing it, so I mean, it's a shame to lose it, but it, it, it's just not worth my health. I'll just uh, find I'll have to find another job and just rely on, rely on the good Lord to provide something better for me to do. Um, see, my mother. And my Aunt Rhonda made it into town today. They brought a few more of our things from Michigan that we didn't get. But I still have to make another trip back to Michigan to get the rest of our stuff. So that should be coming the week before classes start. Last weekend was the Bavarian Blast uh, event in New Ulm which was concluded on Sunday with the Bavarian Blast Parade, which I will be finishing up this video with footage from that parade that my wife took. Uh, it's not the whole parade, it's just gonna be random chunks of the floats that she thought were the most interesting. Uh, I must say that based on parades that I've seen in Michigan where I'm from, this was a very, very interesting one. It had a lot more music bands, not like marching bands, but just interesting little music groups. Uh, Kraft Foods had a, we can't really call it a float because there weren't really any floats per se, but they were in the parade, they were giving away small blocks of Velveeta uh, and mac and cheese and trying to, you know, represent in a little bit and show their support for the community. Later on in the parade, uh, 3M came through with a semi loaded with stuff and they were both gently handing out and throwing uh, blue painter's tape, safety glasses, uh, sticky notes, and these hard plastic sticky note dispensers, uh, which once again, they were just trying to be out there supporting their uh, their community. I know that this, this stuff's all write-offs for these companies, but you know, it, it's nice to see companies that actually show up to events like that and hand out their product. It's, it's, it's a neat thing for them to do. Oh, what else is going on here? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I've, I've been tired. The five-year-old is still having some adjustment issues. He was kind of rowdy today, but you know, with his grandma being in place, but being here, I'm sorry. I'm tired. I'm, I haven't even started school yet, and I'm exhausted. Um, I talked with my counselor, I guess he is, I can't, the, for school. We had a nice talk. He's a really nice man. Uh, just He just wanted to sit down and kind of get to know me. I think he probably does it with all his uh, second career guys, just to kind of know where they're at and understand where they're at and try to set up a line of uh, support if we need anything. Uh, I told him what I was doing here. And he seemed fairly excited about it. He said that him and the rest of the guys at whoever it is at MLC that kind of handles the second career pastor track and whatnot have been thinking about trying to sit down with their students and video, have you know, a little video interview with them so that they have information that they can get out to other students and to themselves. And like I said, he was excited that I had kind of jump-started that and myself and was already doing this myself. So I don't know, maybe this whole thing is going to turn into something that will help MLC in general. I at least hope that it helps other people trying to come in and become pastors late in life. And as I, I say in the main intro video, that has nothing to do with the wells. 
I don't really care what denomination you're trying to get into, you know, just use the video if it's helpful to you, and you know, God bless. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that I can find some spare time to maybe sit down and work with him and the other people at MLC, and maybe we can, you know, based on my experiences, we can figure out a way to clean things up because there's just not, there's not a lot of information about doing this. And my family and I found that we just kind of got dropped into place and just had to start digging and looking and figuring things out ourselves ourselves and it would be a lot nicer and a lot easier on people like us if there was just more information stuff they could watch and you know really really get used to um other than those things uh there's not a heck of a lot going on it's been a fairly low-key week nothing too traumatic aside from you know having to quit one of the jobs that i absolutely need to survive but the Lord will provide in one way, shape, or form or another, and uh, yeah, I, I don't think I have much more updates for this uh, this week. Uh, so yeah, just uh, sit tight and stay tuned for some uh, footage from Bavarian Blast, and uh, God bless you all, and uh, have a good week. Sorry, stay tuned for some footage from the Bavarian Blast Parade, not the actual festival. I did not go to the festival. If you made it this far, thank you for watching this video. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I got my sticky notes. Thanks, 3M.